Hello guys, my name is Remik and in today's video we are going to talk about the API versioning, so the way of configuring, organizing your endpoints and being prepared for the new releases of the product. So just imagine to have the mm, one endpoint that returns the list of the students, but it's only returning uh, the properties, so the first name and last name of those students. Uh, and you have the new requirement for the new release just to include also the city and also the country for that student DTO object. So you need to create another endpoint because you need to have also this existing one up and running. So the API versioning will just help you um, and allow to manage uh, two different kinds of endpoints in the very organized way. If you like this video, then please hit the subscribe button down below, give me the like, write the comment, and now we are going straight into the topic. Okay guys, so we can start with the introduction how my API looks like. So as I have said, um, we have the students controller, which is returning the students with the first name and last name only. Here we have the Fred and Wilma Flintstones. Uh, so we have the student DTO with the first name and the last name. And we would like just to return also the city and the country in the student DTO version 2. So we need to somehow manage that with the API versioning. So we have that student controller and students controller uh, with the V2 and the get students V2 as well. And we are returning that city and country uh, that will be the Paris and the France. And um, when I will just run this API, now we will have the uh, error 500 from the Swagger because actually we have the same two kinds of the endpoints, so they are not differentiated with the, um, with the URL or actually anything else. So um, as you see, we have the conflicting method path combination get API students students for those two different actions. So um, in order to have our two versions of uh, that endpoint, we need to um, install um, at first two nugget packages that can allow us to uh, deal with the API versioning. So um, just you have to type ASP versioning.mvc and we have to install MVC and also MVC.API Explorer. So I'll just do that now. I'll install those two. All right, now once we have our um, Nugget packages installed, we can start with the um, attribute assignment on our controller. So the API version, and we can specify 1.0. Once this is the, this, um, the very basic student DTO object, so uh, the first name, last name, and we can do the same for our second controller with the version 2.0. Now we are going back to the program CS and we have to specify everything related to the API versioning configuration. So builder services and the method add API versioning, we have to pass the options here. And the first thing to do is just to assign the default API version. So uh, when we'll not assign any API version to our controller, it will be by default our specified here API version. So by default, always, this is like the very common to assign the major version one and minor zero. The next thing is just to, is just to write assume default version when unspecified. So it will be actually when unspecified, it will be this default 1.0. The next thing to do is just to have the options dot report API versions, and we can set this to true. It will just return for us uh, in the response from our API, the supported API versions. And next thing to do, and the most important actually, is just to API version reader. And here we have four different API version readers. This is the URL, this is the query, header and media type API version reader. So 
Mm, we can just start with the with the first one. So it will be new URL API version reader. And we have to type also at API Explorer. And now we can create two files. So it will be configure configure swagger options. And it will be the swagger default values. And now we have just to go to the GitHub to the open API example from this nugget package API versioning and we can just copy the content of those two classes and put in the, our classes and then register in our DI container. So I'll just go here. I will copy like the whole content. Then we need also to fetch all related namespaces and the Swagger default values will be the next class. So you can just copy everything here. And now we are ready actually to configure everything up to the end. So we have to we have to below the at endpoint API Explorer, we have to add builder services at at transient and it will be I I configure options and we have to pass swagger gen options and then our configure swagger options and the next thing to do is just to write in this default method at swagger gen it will be options operation filter and swagger default values that we have just created. Okay guys, we are almost ready. We have to go to our controllers V1 and V2 and write down root API V version, API version and also the controller. So here we have the possibility to use the v1 v2 in the url itself uh, uh, once we have assigned this here so url segment api version reader only so it will be fetched from this and also here we have another possibility once we will have also the media type query and also the header version assignment also we have the another version of that kind of the urls so we have to we have to assign this also to our second version and we can start this up and i can show you how it looks like in the swagger as you see we don't have any kind of errors anymore so those two classes that we have copied out from there out from the uh, original api versioning asp net documentation are working fine so we have the URL based version assignment. So if we execute this, we have the first name and the last name. So the Fred and Wilma uh, are in our response. And when we type 2.0, as you see, we have the first name, last name, country, and the city. So it looks fine and here we have the definition also so we have the f the 1.0 and 2.0 as well so we have the default value here and as you see when I execute here so by default when it's nothing assigned it's this default 
version over here. So, so this API version 1.0. So assume default version when unspecified. Okay guys, so now we can just also mm, take a look on different kinds of the API versioning uh, that we can do over here based on the different version reader. So let's just try the header based, so header API version reader, and then we can just specify the header name. So let's say the X API version. And I can open up our application once again. And as you see, we have this X API version here. So when we are passing this, as you see, it's attached to the actual header. So this API version 1.0. When we use 2.0, as you see, the first name, last name city and the country is retrieved from our API. The next thing to do is also to check the query based, so the query string API version reader, and we can leave the same one, parameter name, so as you see, as you see here we have the X API version that is attached by the query, as we have here in the parentheses itself, and as you see, it's added here to the, as the query parameter. And the last thing is also the media type. It should be done this way. And here, as you see in the media type, uh, it will require just to have the X API version 1.0. And in the second one, we have the XAPI version 2. And everything is retrieved based on the different version of our endpoint. Okay, guys, and as the last part, I can show you that you can also handle different kind of the API version readers at once. So you can just combine many of them as you wish. So you can use the API version reader dot combine and specify, for instance, everything here. And as I can show you by the debug here in my Swagger, how it looks like. So you have the one endpoint that will require the version. So this is this URL based and also you have this query API version, header API version, and also this media type. So as you see, we can have everything here. So you have this, this header uh, API version 1.0, the media type, and also the query. So it retrieves properly. And also you have the 2.0 versions of the same endpoint. As you see, everything works fine. If you give this 2.0 as well, so the URL based version reader works the same. Okay guys, that's everything for today's video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like button and about write in the comment how you are actually dealing with the API versioning. I wish you a very nice day and see you in the next video.